Hey, what's up? What's going on? It's your girl, Mary Jane. Please like, comment, subscribe to my YouTube channel. It'll be greatly appreciated from the bottom of my heart. My peace, my peoples. So let's talk. Let's talk about Love and Hip Hop Hollywood Season 4, Episode 16, The Reunion Part 2. Last, we start off with Zell, you know, getting ready to hug Mr. Ray and, you know, um, Lyrica and, you know, Mrs. Parker or Nina Parker was like encouraging them to make up and be cordial to each other. So then, you know, Zell got up to walk towards, you know, Ray and he gave him one, two, one, two. Ray said he went into the feeding position, basically blocking any hits, I guess. So that's probably why Ray was bleeding because maybe when, you know, um, Zell was giving him that one, two, three, he had on rings and kind of like cut his hand. So that means Ray was protecting himself he was blocking the heads and it was like whoa and then you get you get um what's her name masika said when she saw ray get up or whatever i mean when she saw azel get up she just she rolled her eyes and turned around towards nina parker to talk to her like damn you don't even got your best friend's back you know your hubby's back you're not gonna look and see a warn and say hey don't hug him or stand up something to get security you know being more on the on the alert of something that might happen and ray what's up with that you have your sworn enemy on this show coming after you um to give you a hug or whatever and you just sit there and you just stay there you don't jump up you don't do anything to protect yourself to protect your neck what's going on ray you know my mother always said this don't write checks that your ass can't cash because like i was telling you guys a while ago that no if you check out um hollywood street i mean <laughs> um <laughs> I was like Hollywood Street King. If you check out um, Hollywood Unlocked, you will get Zell's story, Ray's story, and Ray's boyfriend's story. And basically, it all, you can figure out who's actually telling the truth and who was actually lying. So Ray, so Ray was going around with a lot of rumors and bringing, you know, Zell's ex-boyfriend around on a scene when they were filming, but they didn't show it or whatever. And, you know, Masika knew about all this. And so, um... When you talk crap and you talk junk about people and, and all this other stuff, sometimes you think it's just going to be worse, but sometimes it's not worse. Sometimes people don't play them games. Like, you, can, you can't talk about everybody. You can't dog everybody out. You can't say sly remarks and think you're going to get away with it. And if you do say things like that, be ready to defend yourself because you don't know how the person's going to react. So, it would have been, you know, I'm not here for the violence. I'm not here for none of that kind of stuff. But... When you call out people and you do things and you're having arguments back and forth talking about each other, somebody might take it the wrong way and want to retaliate physically and not with verbally. So basically, you just got to make sure you do what you're supposed to do and protect yourself if you're talking crap, if you're talking smack. That's what you got to do out here in these streets. And it's like, damn. But Seek was like, I turned my head to ignore it. And did you guys see Alexis Guy laugh up there? That was, I can't even lie. Alexis Guy made me laugh. Like, she was falling over laughing. And it was just crazy to see that. I was like, oh, my God, Alexis, look at the pictures. Alexis Guy was just, she fell out her chair laughing in the whole night. I was like, no, she didn't. But then, why would she not laugh? If she got beef with Mr. Ray, too, as well, and she ain't friends with him, and they going back and forth, why would she not laugh? Why would people expect her not to laugh? You know what I mean? It's just like, let's, people are human, and people are going to laugh at some shit, because I laugh. Even though I was like, damn, that's messed up. Even Solo Lucci jumped up out of his chair, and he was like, yo, homeboy, you lame, you lame. You know, you don't sneak nobody like that. And, you know, everybody was talking about, you know, Zell sneaking Ray. He shouldn't have snuck Ray, but how else was he going to get to Ray? If he would have said, hey, let's square up, security would have broke it up. So he maybe he thought he was never going to see Ray or catch up to Ray, so he caught up with him on the Love & Hip Hop Hollywood reunion um, show. <laughs> That's so wrong. Alexis Guy, you know Alexis Guy is a dirty person or whatever, but she, <coughs> the way she laughed was just horrific. I mean, like, very childish and everything, but it's just like seeing some, seeing your arch enemy, you know, getting their payback or whatever, whatever you think is payback, you know, you're going to laugh. So, you know, A1 was consoling Mr. Ray. I didn't even see, you know, what's her name, um, Masika, really consoling, you know, Ray. You know what I mean? It's just like she really didn't care. And, and, and also, I think that, you know, 
this all led up to Masika and, you know, not trying to really consolidate or, or stop the beef between them, not sitting them down, not talking to them, not being like, yo, you know what? These guys are going to go back at each other. I don't want to be a part of, I don't want to be on your team. And I don't want you on my team. I'm just done because I'm not going to be in the middle of these guys going back and forth at each other. That's not what I'm going to do. Both of you guys are my friend. I respect both of you, both of you and everything, but yo. If these guys can't get along and you're going to be going back and forth and arguing with each other and then every time you see each other it's going to be some type of lashing out then I don't want to be a part of the friendship at all because I don't want to choose sides it seems like Masika could have did more to make sure that Ray and Zell didn't come off that they didn't argue and fight because they were both fighting for Masika's attention both fighting for to be Masika's you know gay best husband or whatever so it seems like she could have did a lot more and put a lot of more effort in to making sure that it didn't go sour because you know what it probably even would have been better tv if Masika, ray and zell was all cool and friends it, they probably would have had a lot more going on having a lot more fun and, and been a lot more entertaining and then for Masika not to even just to say, oh, when I saw Zell come up, I turned around. I didn't pay no attention. Like, come on, you you know this man, you know Zell, and you're gonna and it's just like Ray was up there by himself. Security it took security to forever to realize that you know Ray was actually being attacked, and so you know Alexis guy up there laughing like a bird, like a chicken, like a duck, <laughs> like a pigeon, like a feather, <laughs> with her orange Kool Aid dyed hair. She was up there just laughing her butt off i ain't gonna even lie she made me laugh she really did i was just like oh so when mr sozel he walks out he's leaving he was like by new york you know mr ray was still talking junk talking about oh you poor you whack you live out a trash bag and he's still talking mad crap don't write checks that your ass cannot cash don't talk junk don't try to come at people if you're not ready for their response because you can't control how a person's going to respond to the way that you act towards them so sometimes you might get a mediocre response, mediocre response, or you might get a big response. You might get that one, two, three, four. So, <laughs> you know, A1 is consoling him, you know, and Ray kind of like lashed out at, at um, Tiara a little bit, but then, you know, he calmed down, whatever, and Tiara apologized for her cousin acting like that. So everybody was calling um, Zag an animal, was uncalled for, wasn't deserved, Ration had um, been attacked, and that's very true. He sh no one should ever put their hands on you, especially when you have ver when you can use that verbal. You know what I mean? That verbal communication is a hell of a thing. But if you're using negative um, words and you're coming at somebody negative, you don't know how they're gonna respond, and you can't control how they respond. So it was like, oh no. And then Nina Parker asks, you know, Alexis Sky, why was you laughing? We told that you was laughing. She was like, I wasn't laughing. I was laughing at the fact that, you know, um, Zell, uh, Zell was going to give, you know, Ray a hug. Like, I thought that was funny. I wasn't laughing at him being hit or whatever and stuff like that. Like, Alexis Sky, just tell the truth. Be like, yo, me and Ray got beef. He, he come at me. He did this. He did that. And I don't like him and he don't like me. And I, and it was good to see him get, you know, that one, two, three. Like, be honest. Just be, sometimes you just got to be real about things. But maybe if she was real, you know, she could possibly be kicked off the show. So who knows? <laughs> And so Ray, he's still talking junk, you know. He says, oh, that's all right. She can laugh if she wants to because I don't like her anyway. And I was laughing when Monique snatched her wig off. So then why are you mad? She laughing at you getting that one, two, three. <laughs> but, but Ray is not, you could tell Ray's not the type of guy that fight back and hit and stuff like that. So it will be more wise if you didn't run your mouth. That's all I'm saying. But doesn't give anybody the right to do anything, you know, harmful to him especially while you're at work, you know, you know what I mean? If I'm at work and I'm fighting, I'm going to get fired. <laughs> so, okay, so I guess we get on to that. So they give, Ray comes back out, they give him a standing ovation, and he's still talking about Zell, talking about Zell, don't got nothing to lose. Well, if you know he ain't got nothing to lose, why would you come after a person that got nothing to lose and argue with them and call them names and try to set them up with their, with their exes, bringing them on the scene and doing things like that? If you know they ain't got nothing to lose, that means coming after you that they ain't got nothing to lose, so they're going to go all the way with you. So sometimes you got to think before you do things. And so, <laughs> but he was still talking junk about Zell. He was yelling and screaming. Yelling and screaming ain't going to help you if you don't, if you can't, 
um, kick somebody off their legs. Like I would have <laughs> kicked his legs or something, knocked him off his feet. I would have stood up if we would have came towards me. That way security would have jumped in front of you, Ray. Security would have jumped in front of, you know, um, Zell. And he probably would have been able, he probably wouldn't have been able to hit, hit you or whatever. And plus I wouldn't want a man bending down, hugging me. I would have to stand up f to give that proper hug and and especially always be on your guard. Always stay on your guard. Especially when your enemy's trying to hug you. So Zell's gone. He was like, bye New York. Bye New York. And Ray was like, you know, I'm going to act. I'm going to handle the situation like a white woman. I'm going to press charges. I'm calling the Pope pose. Well, do what you got to do. <laughs> and, you know, Masika's calling, um, you know, Zell or Animal and all this other stuff and everybody. And so then A1 did say something very important. He was like, he didn't want this to go down, this to happen because we all black people. We're all black people trying to make it. I just really wanted them to get along and be at peace. Then that's when, you know, um, Tiara Marie was like, I don't think they just need to be cordial. They didn't need to hug. I didn't think it was a good idea for him to get in a hug. And that's when Nina Parker said, well, I encouraged it. And that's when um, Lyrica said I encouraged it as well. So it is what it is with that situation, boy. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> oh no <laughs> the way alexis sky was laughing was not even right like she fell out the chair she was just laughing like a high school girl like a middle school girl she was just laughing her butt off <clears throat> And then that's when Masika says, you know, trash bag and, you know, Zell, he ain't nobody's friend. He's shady. He'll do his own mother and he'll do anybody and he's not a good person. He's not this. He's not that. So I guess what that's where they go with that situation. Then we get Masika. She, uh, she's arguing with, you know, Nikki baby. <laughs> because Nikki Baby's trying to say, you know, Nikki Baby was trying to say something about, you know, the reason why these girls wasn't having friendships and the reason why Lyrica didn't feel comfortable with Masika is because, you know, this one was friends with this one, this one was friends with that one. And so basically Nikki Baby was trying to speak for um Lyrica and you know Masika was like shut up you know be quiet like you don't even know what you're talking about I don't want to hear it and then you know Nikki baby was like what are you talking about like um let me talk let me speak and then so Masika was like I don't got to be quiet then they go back and forth calling each other's name you know Nikki baby was like oh you just laid on your back and got pregnant hopefully you'll get some money and we're calling her broke saying that you look you look you look despondent you look terrible you look broke you look cheap you look terrible I don't know where your money's going but you look horrific I told you guys on the reunion part one, Masika money is going towards her daughter. That's why she looks, you know, very disheveled, you know, the whole season long. And she had these hairstyles because she's, you know, she's taking care of her daughter. And it doesn't seem like Fetty Wap is giving her any money. So that's why I don't believe when Alexa Sky said that Masika was contacting the blogs and trying to give him $1,000 for a false story. Um, to plan about Alexis guy being with another guy to get Fetty Wap mad. I don't believe that at all. That sounds full gazy. And so, and so then, <laughs> but Nikki Baby was like, your dirty feet. She was like, look what you got on. And so, you know, Nikki Baby got up and she was like looking towards, you know, um, Masika. Masika got up. Masika was like, I ain't scared of you. I ain't afraid of you. You can't do nothing to me with your plastic self. You ain't real and all this other stuff. Masika lays on the ground, you know, showing us her belly. <laughs> showing us her outfit is too tight and it don't fit. We're lucky. Masika is lucky that her outfit, her pants did not split on her. Masika talking about she had Versace, Ralph Lauren. She was naming all these name brands. I don't believe you because Zell's not your friend anymore. So he can't give you the Keisha Cole hookup. And my opinion, just my opinion. All is my opinion. <laughs> <clears throat> then we move on to the love triangle between Brooke, Booby, Bridget, and Marcus. And Brooke kissing Booby, and they're showing that kiss, and it was all sexual and passionate. And Keisha Cole co signed and said, Yes, that kiss was passionate. They kissed like, Woo, it was nobody business at all. Like, whoa. And, you know, um, um, Keisha Cole was like, I didn't even see her kiss you like that, Marcus. And then A1 jumps in and was like, well, I think it's only fair that Keisha Cole kisses Marcus. And Keisha Cole was like, come on then. And then Marcus jumped up. Everybody was like, ah, woo, yay. And so Keisha goes, I'm just playing. And Booby just sitting there all quiet. <laughs> and so now we get back to Nina Parker asking her questions to Brooke. And Brooke, um, 
you got any panties on today? And if you don't got any panties on, who 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 would you be giving it to or whatever? And then that's when Brooke, you know, let us know that she is in celibacy. She is not having sex. She haven't had sex with Marcus. Uh, Booby, that's the story. That's what she's saying. I don't know if you guys believe it. Uh, it doesn't seem like Keisha Cole believes Brooke and Booby. She believes Brooke and Booby got something going on that's far more deep and passionate without no joke, in my opinion. So we learned that Brooke is not going around. We learned that Brooke is not having sex with anybody. She She's saving it for herself to get married. She's not going to give up the box until she gets married. She's waiting for that ring. And Marcus also agreed when he got into a relationship with her. So now we understand why Marcus was cheating on Brooke because he wanted to soar his oats. He wanted to let loose. He wanted to shoot somebody's club up. But, um... <clears throat> So we learned that they're not having sex and or they haven't had sex. And you know what? Um, even though Brooke was kind of messy, was messy on this season, playing around with Booby's heart, playing around with Marcus and all this other stuff, going back and forth and acting very catty, acting, you know, um, <clears throat> she did give a good message, you know, letting young girls know that, you know, you can save yourself. You can wait until you're married if that's something that you choose to want to do, if you believe in that. And also, just because she had a baby and, you know, she's single now, doesn't mean that she has to run around town spread her legs like <clears throat> some of her cast members. So, that's where we go from there. <laughs> I'm just like, these people are too much. I was like, oh my God, I didn't even know that. And so they so they addressed the kiss between Brooke and Booby. And basically the kiss, you know, Brooke says the kiss was like a middle school kiss. Like we would have had back in middle school, but we didn't kiss back then. And so, you know, Marcus was like, hell no, that was no middle school kiss. And Keisha Cole co-signed on that kiss as well. And so, and it was also um, interesting to hear Brooke says her and Marcus pray together and they have like some type of spiritual bond going. So you see why Marcus stays around and you see why she stays around Marcus because I don't think Booby can go without sex. Booby has to have sex and Booby's the type of guy that like, he's a philanthropist and he likes to get it in because everywhere he turns around, he's licking his tongue and trying to be with somebody. So I don't think that he will be down to, to marry Brooke right now. In my opinion, but hey, who knows? And Keisha Cole is just trying to find out what kind of woman Brooke is because, you know, she really has some control over what kind of woman is around her son. You know what I'm saying? And it also seemed like Marcus didn't really exist. It was it seemed like Brooke's focus and her attention was on Booby and Bridget. Like, she was really more concerned about Booby and the kiss and their relationship and their theme. Like, she wasn't really all that concern about Marcus that's what it seemed like to me maybe I'm wrong you guys let me know tell me your thoughts and your opinion on this reunion part two and so um <laughs> Brooke ain't Brooke Brooke ain't playing around she's waiting till she get married <laughs> oh my goodness and then booby and then Marcus got a chance to see her kiss booby that passionate kiss and so she also asked booby you know what my ring finger is clear so you want to bring out that ring and he ain't ready yet she was like well just let him cool down because he just seen me kiss you know booby or whatever and booby's just sitting there quiet <laughs> I'm like, oh boy and booby tried to explain himself that he was single Brooke was single and so was bridget kelly single as well so you know it was just kissing I guess that was it. <laughs> and so Marcus also says that his divorce is finalized and all this other stuff. So we get to the frenemy part of the show with Brooke and Bridget. And so basically the question is, you know, um, they want to know if Booby and Bridget got it together. Um, you know, did the, the nasty together or whatever. But Brooke says no. Booby says no. But if you go back to the clip um, when she's arguing with, you know, Brooke and she's arguing and Marcus is standing there. She says, if you want to know how good this vagina is, just go ask Booby when we was in Catalina. I was like, whoa. But she could have been saying that because she was mad because of the way Brooke came and approached her and just threw that to throw a shot. But who knows? We'll see. We know Booby will lie if he did have sex with you or not. But we don't know if he had sex with Hazel E or not. Now we just got to consider Hazel E as a nothing but a liar. And so... Moving on from that, then they talk about, and so then, you know, Nina Parker, she asks, you know, um, Brooke, which was she more upset about, you know, Bridget, 
you know, getting a song or her going to Catalina with Booby. And Brooke says what? She says she was more upset that Brooke went to Catalina with Booby. And basically she explains because she's best friends with Booby. She's good friends with Brooke. And she talks to she talked to both of them and none of them mentioned neither one of them mentioned that they were going to Catalina together. So she kept so she felt slighted and hurt by that. But I'm like, damn, you got your man Marcus right next to you. All you guys are not together, but you're trying to work it out. And you're gonna say, yo, you, you, your biggest concern was, you know, Bridget going to Catalina with Booby when you're just friends, e even if they didn't want to tell you what they were doing. And so that's when um, Bridget was like, yo, stop trying to be a private eye, private detective. Like it's none of your business, really. And she goes, well, I want to know everything. And so it seems like she might have a little bit more feelings for Booby than we even know. And maybe Marcus knows that as well. Marcus didn't seem that confident on stage as he did throughout the season with booby right there and booby was just sitting there chilling with his voice you know booby has a voice that is kind of seductive and so <laughs> and so they asked james what did he think about the uh, what did he think about you know bridget going to catalina and then also they show bridget kissing you know booby and, you know, um, he goes, I dodged a bullet like Nino, like Neo said. And so um, Bridget was like, I dodged a bullet too. <laughs> and she also said that she did not cheat on James. She was like, she just kissed him, but she really didn't kiss him. It was the editing. They didn't see how things went down. And she blamed it on editing. And Marcus said that it's not editing. Marcus was like, come on, you can't blame it on editing. And Nina Parker said, you can't blame a kiss on editing. No, unless you forced a kiss. And so... Um, so then that situation goes down and she goes, I didn't even have sex with, uh, with booby, whatever. All I did was he only thing he did was hold me as I cried over James. Um, and I'm not going to cry over James no more. It's done. It's over. I'm good. I'm gone. It's over. And I never cry over him again or whatever. So then she also, I was, then Brooke said she wanted to address the song part. She goes, she had no idea that the song was that, you know, Brooke was on the song at all and Marcus didn't tell her and she said she feels like that was shady that Marcus didn't tell her that Brooke was originally on the song and she's that some guy she didn't say anything to Brooke about the studio being in the studio with Marcus because she know what they're going through and she knew that Brooke would take it a whole nother way and we know Brooke would have took it another way because look how she's so catty with the situation with Marcus and Booby and how she wants to uh, micromanage what Booby's doing <laughs> And what Bridget is doing. <laughs> and so, um, and so then, um, Brooke turns around and she looks at Marcus and she was like, and so Marcus was like, well, you didn't tell me you was one of Booby's little chicks. She was I'm not one of Booby's little chicks. We ain't together. We ain't mess. We didn't have sex. And Bloods ain't the third. I was like, oh no. And then, you know, Bridget also addressed that she, she never had, she never had any, um, thing with uh, Marcus they never messed around or play around or anything like that unlike what Brooke does and so um you know Bridget says me and Booby are just friends and then that's when Brooke said oh yeah just like the way me and Booby are just friends like Bridget is throwing, throwing all types of subliminals out there that you know she got a little bit more going on with Booby even though if she was just trying to give an example but damn Marcus is right next to you These guys are um um, color coordinated and clothes like what's good with that she was like you know I'm just I'm just of a friend of, of booby as you are right I was like Ooh. Mm -mm -mm. and so you know Keisha Cole was like yo listen I don't know what it is but you know Brooke you need to get it together who like who do you want you're going around playing these games and you want to be with you want to be with Marcus you want to you want to be with you know um booby but it seems like you're more passionate towards you know, Booby, and that's the same thing Marcus says as well. Like, she seems like her heart is there with Booby. What's good? So, I don't know. It's just like, oh, goodness. And when he, when, when um, Marcus said that you said you want a Booby's little chicks, yeah, Booby got a bunch of chicks running around town or whatever. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> and then when Bridget, you know, b blamed the editing on the kiss, Brooke was like, I don't believe it. She threw her hands up like she was upset, like she was mad. Like, I can understand her being mad because if they're both supposed to be her friends, they can keep her in, let her know so it won't be a shock or a surprise. I can understand that. But she seemed like she was mad on a jealous type of stuff. And maybe not. Maybe she was just hurt that neither one of them explained what was going on between them two because she felt like they were friends. So James is just happy. And then James throws up and he makes a comment. He goes, well, maybe now you can work on that remix. You know, the pussy's so good.
And then, so Booby was like, it ain't funny. <laughs> and so James said the reason, I mean, so Marcus said the reason why he gave Brooke the song because, I mean, he gave Bridget the song is because Brooke was in the studio with Booby all the time. She wasn't spending no time with him. So he was kind of slighted and he felt jealous. So he was trying to get back at her too as well. But he said his divorce is final. So it is what it is. And so we get to Tiara Marie and her alcoholism and, you know, rehab. And basically, you know, she felt like, you know, maybe, you know, the her cast members really didn't have her back. They was trying to throw her under the bus. But she said it was good as well. Going to rehab, she changed. And so Nina asked her, do you think that your friends, you, do you think things would have worked out differently between you and Cisco if your friends didn't get involved in the situation? Tiara said no and yes. Um... It was going to go bad anyway because he got a girl real quick. And Cisco wasn't faithful. And he wasn't even real with her and honest with her. He didn't even tell her that her, that him, that Cisco and actually, you know, Nikki Baby had a relationship. Some some type of shit going on that she was traveling, going different places. New York, Long Beach, California, staying in hotels with him. Just partying up. And Tiara didn't even know. So it was a shock to her. And then this Amber chick was a shock to her. So... Basically, he did play her, and, like, she called him out. She was like, I'm getting played by a TV vixen, a TV dude, you know what I mean? Because Tiara was like, yo, listen, you know I'm going to see the footage of you making out with Amber and kissing on her and hanging out with her. Why would you disrespect me like that? You know I'm going to see it because you didn't care, and he damn sure didn't care. He goes, oh, you made my life stressful out here. So, you know, I had to run. If Cisco should have played his cards right and been good to her, you know, and maybe he would have been on this season. He'll be on next season, but it doesn't look like he's going to be on next season. I don't know if he's going back to New York or not, but... So anyways, they start to talk about the intervention and, you know, Monique, I mean, and, you know, Tiara was like, yo, when we had the intervention, I didn't know if they was doing it for TV because where's my family and where's my blood at, you know? I didn't know what was real or whatever. And so then they showed the clips of Monique and Nia basically trying to talk to Cisco about getting, you know, Tiara and rehab and all this other stuff and telling, you know, Cisco about her, her situation. And then that's when Monique jumped in and said, hey, listen, I was, I told told Nina um I told Nia that hey listen I don't think we should be telling you know um Tiara's business to Cisco or whatever it was really a bad idea for them to even talk to Cisco about her situation they should have did it on their own because at the end Cisco wasn't involved and they had to do it on their own on their own without Cisco and help with production from Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. So basically, you know, Moniz do all that blame on Nia, Nia or whatever. And so, and so then that's when, you know, Cisco was like, you're a bullshit artist. You're a liar. You said this, you said that. She was like, no, you scumbag. You didn't like my friend. You used my friend. You played my friend. You're this, you're that. So they got, they was going back and forth. He was calling, he called her a bum ass B word. She called him a scumbag gum bucket she called him different names and you know security had to hold <laughs> had to hold Moniz back and then Cisco jumped up because he got upset because you know Cisco don't like no woman yelling at him or whatever Cisco seemed like he might have issues with you know the vest domestic violence as well because it seemed like if nobody was there he probably would have hit Moniz but he picked up the pillow and tried to throw it you know that and that's when you know um what's her name Nikki Baby was like, yo, stop it, Cisco. I'm trying to calm Cisco down or whatever. Cisco's a big dude. Security took a little bit long time to get there. And none of the other guys stood up that was on the show. They was just like looking at Cisco. That was a bad look for you. You know, you cry a lot. You whimper a lot. And you try to come off as this nice guy. And you've been through a lot of trials and tribulations. You know, having a colostomy bag. You know, your mom being sick, losing your brother and stuff like that. But yeah, you're going to get up and throw a pillow at a woman that's yelling at you. When you already know how she is. Then he caught and didn't, you know, Moniz was like, oh, you fired that's why you're not gonna be our next season and he goes oh i'm not fired from nothing i'm not fired from nothing so i don't know if cisco's actually fired from new york and cisco was like oh you got fired from new york or whatever that's why richie dollars played you and all this other stuff and richard dollars fired you so they calmed down that situation so then cisco continues to lie and said he did not cheat or play tiara and then he was like, oh, no, when we had that little studio session and we argue, whatever, we didn't talk for a couple of days. So that's when I went to go hit up Amber. Amber's been in the picture because you just didn't call out the blue and say, hey, what's up? She's been in the picture and you was doing your thing and you did play um, Tiara. And I'm glad she's done with you. She called you a loser and, she's, and you're a bum and she's good written. And Tiara is in the gym. She's in the studio. She got a Uber, her song Uber is dropping in November. 
and she has her album coming out in January and she's focused her mind is on her money and her money's on her mind now and Tiara is not drinking she says she gets nervous um, when she has hold a glass in her hand she drinks out of, out of a water bottle and then you know um, Nina asks her did any of the cast members say anything to you about you know you um, slipping or you know slipping basically having another drink she was like yeah it was um, Sika and then come to find out it was actually Zelly on the other end talking about um, Tiara was lying that they was drinking I think it was Zell that she was talking about she because she said trash bag so I'm thinking it was Zell she didn't say a name or whatever so Masika said so um you know Tiara was like I was hurt by that but she has not been drinking and she's staying clear of drinking and all that other good stuff <laughs> and so well Monice you know Monice tried her best to help but you know it seemed and so then you know also Tiara me throws up that you know Monice didn't even call her or whatever and some I mean and Tiara was like Monice didn't call her and you know she had my dog and everything I gave her my extensions and so but Nikki Baby was like I called you all the time T I called you all the time what are you talking about and so then Monice said Monice said she felt kind of slighted because she didn't have Tiara's extension but you know um Nikki Baby had her extension so she felt like maybe you know Tiara's coming at her because of what she did for the intervention or whatever but you know what Moniz if Tiara doesn't want to be your friend or whatever you you saved her life you helped her out and that's why she's skinny now and she also has an uh, uh um single coming out and she has an album coming out soon and if you didn't intervene in her life that probably wouldn't be happening right now so you led um, Tiara to the water and she chose to drink it and now look how good she's doing so you did your part and that's all you can do is do your part because you know what you wouldn't have been a good friend if you didn't do nothing even though I know some people would say and Tiara feels like oh maybe you shouldn't do it on camera but maybe if they didn't do it on camera Tiara would have never got the help because somebody had to pay for it so it was probably VH1 the producers and the people helped Tiara out so that's cool and so they talk about Chanel West Coast you know her working with you know um Safari and how she dissed A1 and all this other stuff and so um, A1 did say, you know, um, what's her name? Lyrica said, I don't want these girls hitting up my man, hitting up my man in the DM trying to, oh, can you work with me? Can you work with me? And you're not even that talented, baby. Ray just said, who are you talking about? Like, yeah, who are you talking about? Um, 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 Lyrica, because she said that. So I didn't know she was talking about Chantel West. Who was she talking about when she said that? Or was Lyrica just talking about random girls hitting up A1 that are not that talented or whatever? Maybe that's it. And so basically, you know, Lyrica wasn't jealous. She just wanted um, A1 to finish the project, but she was a little jealous, in my opinion. And plus, she didn't want the project to be finished. And so then Lyrica talks about all these rappers hit me up to work with them. And A1 was like, why do you need to go working with them when, you know, I'm number one right now? I got the hottest, I got Oscar or, you know, I have platinum pen machine right now. I'm hot right now and I can do everything. I do vocals. I do this. I do artist development. I do training. I write. So you don't need nobody else but me. So he's jealous too, a little bit too as well. So it is what it is. And so basically that's it. And um, Lyrica and, you know, A1 are doing good. We didn't hear about Pam or Lyrica number one. We didn't hear about them. And basically, also A1 says that he's humble. And so Ray J said, uh, disrespectful if, you know, his wife goes working with somebody else when she has a, the number one dude right there next to her. So anyways, they say goodbye to Safari. He's going to be going to New York, loving hip hop. We'll see him there. We'll see. We see Cisco there doing his bum shit. So peace. I'm out. One love. Please like, comment, subscribe, share the video to be greatly appreciated from the bottom of my heart. My peace, my peoples. I'm out. One love.